guys, what's up? It's Carl here, back with another episode, and the official keynote of WWDC just wrapped up, and we got some pretty big news out of Apple Camp. A lot of that, of course, expected, the first being iOS 14. But more importantly, the next step in Mac OS, which is Mac OS Big Sur, they choose a different name in California every time. I was actually more surprised and more pumped about that update. So here are the biggest new features and updates coming to Mac's latest OS, Big Sur. Love that name. So the biggest focus on this refresh is around the design and that's the biggest updates to the design since Mac OS X actually. Things as simple as icons are being completely redesigned and they're shifting more to a rounded edge compared to the squarish, harsher edges that we have now. They're becoming a bit more cartoony in my opinion and they are implementing some gradients as well. They just wanna simplify the look of icons across all Apple devices. They'll be more recognizable from say your Mac to your iPhone to your iPad. They just want everything to be continuous. And I think that's the goal of Apple always to make all of their products kind of seamless amongst each other. They've remastered some of their iconic sounds, so you'll either love or hate that, but it's a nice little refresh. There is now the addition of control panel coming to Mac OS. So if you have an iPhone or say an iPad, you know, swiping down on the top right side, you'll have your control panel. You can now access that on the top toolbar. Up comes the toolbar. That's what she said. And you can quickly change each of your settings, like switching between light or dark mode, sound, brightness, etc. And you can kind of tweak that to what your custom preference is. We also have an update to Notification Center. It's still located in the top right side and widgets have been updated so you can still add more and they're easier to add. I still would love though if you could add widgets to your home desktop. That's something that we still can't do in Mac OS. I'd love to have my calculator or my latest messages pinned somewhere to my desktop. They're the things that I use most on my Mac device. And I know that varies from person to person and I get it doesn't look as minimal, as sleek as a blank desktop, but it's just something I'd love to see maybe in a future addition to Mac OS. And as for the rest of the design language, things are just looking a bit more modern. They're really relying on transparencies to make you focus on what's important and what you're actually interacting with on your desktop. I think the direction that Apple is taking with Mac OS is in the right way. It looks gorgeous. Can't wait to start using it myself. And true to Apple's fashion, they apply that first to their own native app. So first, of course, Safari. I think that's honestly one of my guilty tech pleasures. I do most of my browsing and internet usage over on Safari and I stray away from Chrome. If you wanna see a way to bog down a $5,000 MacBook Pro, simply open 50 Chrome tabs and you kind of know the next result. And that goes into the efficiency of all of Apple stuff. The browsing experience now should just be faster and more efficient and they even claimed it can load web pages 50 times faster than Chrome and still keep great power efficiency which enables these computers to kind of run on their all day battery life. So that's always a bonus. You can now change or add a background to your favorites homepage, which is a nice little touch and the new translation or dynamic translation icon. If you are browsing a page in a different language, Safari will identify that and you can change that dynamically to any language you want. Obviously most of us switching that back into English. There are a few new additions to the Maps app where you can select favorites and save them. A lot of those features are coming in from iOS. I'm still personally a Google Maps user. Apple, please don't kill me. There's a couple new developer tools which makes it easier for apps that run on iOS or your iPad to bridge straight on over to your Mac. And the biggest announcement, not just coming to Mac OS, but the entire Mac hardware lineup is the announcement of their new silicone chipsets. We've seen the leaks and the rumors. We didn't get a specific piece of hardware announced. I thought they might release a new iMac, iMac Pro, but that's been Apple's plan for the longest time now. They have some really great chipsets found in say the iPhone, the A12, A12Z Bionic, found in the iPad Pro. We saw a sneak peek of one of their Macs running the A12Z Bionic chip. It of course was handling Final Cut Pro like a champ. Since Apple is now building all of their silicone chipsets in house, they can maximize efficiency and still keep high, high performance. I do feel a bit sorry for people that dropped 30, 40 grand on a new Mac Pro with the Intel chipsets. And I know that Apple will still support Intel for the next couple years, probably five to 10 years down the road but their main priority will be switching everyone on that older hardware over to all of the stuff that they are now making. Curious to hear your thoughts though down below. I don't think it's a bad time to buy a Mac laptop or a dedicated iMac right now. If you can hold out for the next year, possibly two until their official line of Mac products launch with their own chipsets inside, I would probably recommend doing that. Still nothing wrong with the Intel based chipsets. You're just kind of buying a dying breed of technology at this point. 
Those are pretty much the updates coming to Mac OS and of course the new Apple Silicon chipsets that are coming out. We'll be grabbing Big Sur pretty shortly and we'll keep you guys updated on social how it performs, but I'm sure it will look as good as we saw over on the keynote. Hope you guys enjoyed this very quick episode and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.